Before I start this video, I just wanna remind you all to know your status and the status of your partner. Please get your home health test kits and your sexual home health test kits at the sponsor link below. Please don't guess and gamble with your health. What's good YouTube? This video is gonna be about one thing that a real man always does that a narcissist never does. This one is simple. A real man should always empower his woman. Empowerment is defined as authority or power given to someone to do something. The process of becoming stronger and more confident, especially in controlling one's own life and claiming one's own rights. The lover of a true narcissist is quiet, weak, shrunken, obedient, invisible, without color, isolated, and broken. On the contrary, the lover of a great man is bold, genuine, capable, and confident. How has your man or the men you've dated affected you? Which one of those do you relate the most to? Many women date men who rule over them. They were first excited. They wanted a man who knew how to take control, but ended up with a man who's just controlling them. They think he's just a dominant alpha male when he's really just scared and run and controlled by his own anxiety. Small men often rule with manipulation and fear. Big men often lead with love. If a man is really controlling and the relationship often leaves you feeling weak and disempowered, he's not healthy enough or mature enough for the type of relationship that you're looking for. Maybe even that he's looking for. No amount of controlling you will give him the type of security required to calm him down. And in most cases, once this starts to happen in a relationship, the woman becomes so weak that she can't resist his effect on her and she starts to shrink because of it and you're not strong enough to resist its effect on you to require a healthy relationship most likely. In this case, in this superior subordinate dynamic established by him, he's more likely to change you than you are to change him. But what does that change look like? Disassociation from your needs, isolation from your chosen relationships and friend circles, acceptance and an unhealthy belief in the criticism you receive, exclusive dependence on him, feelings of inadequacy, intense need of validation and approval by him, Loss of individuality, loss of your voice and willingness to speak up, those among other lasting effects. These changes happen slowly and over time, but they ultimately lead you to being unrecognizable to yourself and often to others. With that said, one sign of a great man is his ability to inspire and to empower you and to make that a priority in your relationship at all times. A lot of weak men don't believe in a woman making decisions in a relationship having access to money or speaking up for herself, especially against him. They see compromise as a weakness and control as strength. They see a woman's healthy ego as a threat. They seek to humble their women at every turn. This is a sign that a man is struggling with his own inadequacies. A lot of these guys seek to create financial dependency in their women as a means to easier control. So be careful not to become financially dependent on any man that you meet before you see what type of leader he is especially what type of leader he is to you. A lot of people are a little bit mentally sick out here and don't realize it. It's not always even malicious or intentional in many cases. They're just run by their fears and their insecurities. Again, every flawed man isn't a narcissist, though it's true that many who are struggling with being too controlling are. When you first start to date a man, you need to look around and ask yourself, does he lead with fear and intimidation or does he lead by love and patience? Does he use empowerment or disempowerment as a vehicle to affect his relationships and his environments? The way a man affects you must be as important as your feelings for him and about him or your hope for the future. You should always feel bigger, faster, stronger, and more capable as a result of a man's presence in your life. Not smaller, weaker, more dependent, and less capable. A real man knows the value of liberation and freedom and of a woman with high self-esteem. Your partner should be your biggest fan and cheerleader. He should not only acknowledge your wins, but he should celebrate them with you. He shouldn't be indifferent to your accomplishments. But many times the narcissist, many times the small man is. Real men want to see you grow and evolve and get stronger as a person. And that's why they prioritize your empowerment. A real man encourages and motivates and supports his woman. He hears her and he listens. That doesn't mean he's perfect. He'll still get on her damn nerves, but it will be always apparent that he respects her and that he loves her, even throughout disagreements. It'll always be clear that a man who really cares for his woman wants what's best for her and wants what's best for their relationship. Sometimes that might look like him taking interest in her interests and not acting as if her interests are somehow or another beneath him. 
which we see a lot of times with narcissistic men, with abusive men, with indifferent men. He participates with her and he considers her and he hears her voice as a friend, lover, and as an equal. A good man empowers his woman to be great, whatever greatness means to her. A weak man disempowers, controls, and manipulates his woman to be of the most use to him. He rarely pushes her to serve herself, to take care of herself, to practice self-love, because that may create empowerment. With that said, if you are seeking out a healthy relationship with a good man, seek out a man who empowers you and others around him. Empowerment versus disempowerment. Just one of the major differences between good men and narcissistic abusers. Anyway, that's all I got for now. Follow me at KevHick24 on Instagram. I'll get with y'all later.